Welcome back to the fourth module in this series of InfoShare tutorials. In this module, we're going to concentrate purely on accessing the overseas trade data that is freely available in InfoShare. The reason we have a whole module devoted to this one data set is because there are a few extra aspects to this data that a new user would need to be aware of. To access the trade data, you would first click on Imports and Exports. Once again, we get several subfolders opening up showing things like indexes, and cargo statistics. However the most detailed and possibly the most useful tables are the three options which are listed at the bottom of this view. These tables show exports, imports and re-exports at the most detailed level of commodity classification. For this example we'll produce a table showing us how many Granny Smith apples were exported to all the different countries in the world. As we want exports we'll click on the table that specifies exports. Now we must choose our variables. To start with near the top of the screen you will find some tick boxes to indicate that we will be getting export data that will give us a quantity and a free on board dollar value of the goods that are being exported. Usually the default settings on this panel are sufficient and it's very rare that they will need readjusting. The next option down is where you choose the country of destination for commodities. The country is in alphabetical order and you first need to highlight the countries you are interested in. In this case we want to know all the exports for Granny Smith's apples, so we simply select all countries. The countries will then be highlighted and we simply move them over into our selection box on the right hand side by clicking on add. Now we can scroll down to choose our HS code from the HS classification. HS stands for Harmonised System and it is simply the coding system that New Zealand Customs uses to classify the different commodities that can be imported or exported. The HS system includes codes for over 13,000 different commodities. It can take a bit of skill to navigate all of these commodities to find the one you are after. So here we will show you a few techniques which you may find useful. The first method is the browse method where you keep expanding HS codes until you narrow down your selection to your required commodity. This can involve a bit of trial and error. To start with, we have two digit codes to represent the different groups of commodities. As you can see, the groupings are very broad, but the descriptions give you an idea of what is likely to be found within each code. For our search for Granny Smith apples, we are likely to find that commodity under 8, fruit and nuts. However, if I just tick that box, then I will have Granny Smith apples included with all the other fruit and nuts, so the stats would not really be that useful for our particular search. Instead of ticking the box, we click on the plus sign to the side of it, which expands the two digit code to show the more detailed four digit codes. Within the four digit codes, we see that 0808 covers apples, pears and quinces, fresh. But again, this isn't detailed enough, so we click on the plus symbol again. We now have six digit codes. The apples can be found under 080810. But to isolate just Granny Smith apples, we need to use the plus symbol one more time. And you'll find Granny Smith apples under the code 080810. 0026 These 10 digit codes are the maximum level of detail that we can produce statistics for. You'll notice that there are no further plus symbols for us to expand these categories any further. But this code matches our search criteria exactly so we put the tick in the box and click on the add button to put this commodity into our selection box. From here, we could carry on with the rest of the table, but I'll go back to show the second method of finding the commodity we are after. The second method involves using the search function. We do this by first clicking on the search tab near the top of the HS code selection box. From here, we need to type a commodity keyword into the search box, for example, apples. And then click on find. The search returns all descriptions which include the word apple in the text. In this case it will include apple juice and pineapples, but by scrolling down and quickly scanning the descriptions we can find and tick 
0808100026 Granny Smith Apples Obviously if your first search doesn't quite give you the results you require then you can try entering some slightly different keywords to see if that helps find your chosen commodity. A third option is to call up New Zealand Customs directly to ask them which codes they are likely to assign to your chosen commodity. They can be called free phone on 0800 428 786. Once we have found and selected our commodity code or codes, we continue our query by clicking on Go. Here we select the time that we would like the data to cover. We can select whether the data shows monthly, quarterly or annual figures. For our search, I will specify monthly data for the 2009 year. At this point, we also have some useful table options which we can select or deselect to subtly change the format of the table. The first of these options is automatically selected for us, show zero rows. This means that if a row in our table displays just a series of zeros, it will still show up in the data. We'll leave it tick for now. Next there is a tick box for show status flags. If this is ticked then the final table will display data as to which statistics, if any, have had to be confidentialised or suppressed. This option will make very little difference to most tables. The next three options, if ticked, will mean the table includes columns and rows for totals and will also mean that some of the country groupings will be split up to show stats for the individual countries. Finally, we can also control whether or not there will be some decimal places included in the stats and what the scale the numbers will be displayed in. Millions, thousands or just simply the single units. Before our table is displayed, we can also order which variables will make up the rows and columns of our table. This should make reading the data easier. For this example, it would be useful for us to make sure the different countries are included as rows and the months are shown as columns in our final table. Please note, there is info about limits to the size of these tables which are displayed at the bottom of the screen. It includes limits for data displayed on the screen and also limits for downloaded files. However, our query is well below this limit, so we can simply click on Go. Our final table shows all of the data we want, but you'll notice that there are a lot of null results in the data. This simply represents a month where there were no reported exports of Granny Smith apples for the chosen country, and you'll also notice the table is rather large. The footnotes are especially useful in trade tables as they will show the units of all the quantity measures. In this case our Granny Smith apples are measured in quantities of kilograms. At the top of the table we also have the usual options discussed in earlier modules, however this time we are going to click on edit table and we will select the remove zero rows option. This reduces the size of our table considerably by removing all the rows representing countries which did not receive any Granny Smith apples from New Zealand within our specified time. For further help regarding infrastructure overseas trade tables you could access the help option at the top of the screen. Or please don't hesitate to call our information service on 0508 525 525, which is a toll-free number in New Zealand. One of our friendly information advisors would be more than happy to talk you through InfoShare.